Today I'm going to demonstrate how you can use the Class Reference Explorer in Ants Memory Profiler 5 to help in the analysis of your application's memory usage. This example will demonstrate a simple strategy for using the Class Explorer and tracking down a potential problem. The application used in this example, QueryB, is a small program which connects to a database and displays the results of a SQL query. It currently has a memory problem, and this demo will show how the Class Reference Explorer can be used to help with the analysis. So let's begin. From the simple setup dialog in Ants Memory Profiler, I've already specified the process to be profiled, Query B. So all that's left to do is to click Start Profiling. When Query B is loaded, we can take our first snapshot to use as a baseline. Next, I connect to a database. I'm using AdventureWorks today, and then enter in a simple query. Our data table has now populated. I can close the form and take my second snapshot. Perfect. We can stop profiling at this point. So let's take a look at the summary page. On the left, we see the classes with the largest size, as well as with the most instances. On the right, we have a comparison, which shows the largest growth in size, and also the largest growth in instances. Here, we can see that our rb3k plus node int array class has grown the most. One of the points I wish to make today is that you do not need to focus on classes with source code. You can easily use the Explorer graph to look at how .NET memory is being used in your application. So let's click on this. We are taken to the class list with the row highlighted. We now have two options. We can create our class explorer graph or we can view the instances. Let's create our graph. Here we see the classes which are referencing our central class. We can see that our rb3k plus tree page in class is referencing our central class. Also, 100% of our central class objects are being referenced by this class. A very simple strategy which we can now use is to simply expand along the top path. This can often lead to a class which is involved in our memory problems. So let's now do that. We should be on the lookout for a class that we do not expect to be there or which has a high percentage of objects which are referencing our central class. Here we see our data table class. If we remember from our query B application, we closed our query form and this data table class should no longer be in memory. So let's investigate this further. If we click on it and zoom in using the scroll wheel, we see two hyperlinks. The first one will show all instances of data table which reference eventually our central class along the expanded path. The second hyperlink will show the instances of our central class which are referenced along this currently expanded path. We're interested in data table, so let's click on that. We're taken to the instances of data table and we see one instance in particular which has a high size with children. We want to find out why it's still in memory. For that, we click on the object retention graph icon. This will show the objects which reference our data table and are preventing it from being garbage collected. You will notice the two objects in grey. This indicates that these objects have had dispose called but are still in memory. We should start at the bottom and work our way up the chain of references. We can see that our query form has a reference to our data grid view which has a reference to our data grid view data connection object which eventually holds our data table object. I guess the real question is why is query form still in memory? If we move up further we can see the system.event handler is holding a reference to query form and that event handler is coming from our connect form. We notice the foregrounded field in the connect form. We now have enough information at this point to switch to Visual Studio and investigate the specific code. To prove that this strategy wasn't just a fluke, I want to demonstrate it again. So let's go back to the summary. The second largest class 
is string. Let's click on it. And once again, we create a class reference explorer graph for it. Here we see that four classes reference our string class. This is a great way of understanding how memory is linked. Let's expand along the top path as we did before, looking for classes which have references to our central class. Here we go again, data table, but let's keep expanding along the top path. It doesn't take long before we find yet another reference. I hope that this has demonstrated the value of the class reference explorer graph. One word of warning, however, that this method isn't foolproof. With some applications, while expanding along the top path, you may notice that classes begin to repeat. This is because there are circular references. If this happens, a different strategy to use would be to go back along the graph and pick the next most referencing class. Alternatively, you could go back to your class list and pick a completely different class and begin the analysis again. I hope this quick tutorial about using the new Class Reference Explorer in Ants Memory Profiler 5 has given you great ideas for analyzing the memory usage of your application. It really is a totally new way of rapidly examining objects in memory, saving you valuable time when trying to track down even the most devious memory leak.